Go for it, Cy. Go. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of a eh, children of all ages. Up Shut up. Oh my god. Today we bring you the best segment in all of podcast history. Ladies and gentlemen, Connor Davis with the Davis Division. Woo! Woo! Oh yeah. I might I might have to do my own. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the TDT Media YouTube channel proudly presents the Davis Division with yours truly, Connor Davis, the most electrifying co-host in sports entertainment history. This is the greatest podcast segment of all time. Let's right, talk football. What you got for us? What you got for us? Bro? Okay. So we know what happened with Tua Toga tomorrow. Toga to Bado Loa. Uh Toga to Digga Daga Digga. Toga to Papa. Toga to Papa. We know what happened to Tua. Tua, his head, which is already a fragile object, and Damar Stevens, Hamlin's right. chest collided together. Um somehow somehow some of these stones didn't pop out. I mean, the NFL script is crazy, right, guys? So, yeah. So, Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel. I'm a big fan of Mike McDaniel. I think he uh, he's pretty good for the Miami Dolphins franchise. Eh. He said today that it is a little pre, and I quote, a little premature, little premature to name the starting QB for the Miami Dolphins going into Monday night against the Titans. So. At the end of the week, oh, well, I guess at the end of the NFL week, you know, Monday's technically the end of the NFL week. It's kind of weird how they start on Thursday and end on Monday. Right, um, right, right. This is what their depth chart is looking like. I'm going to give you their depth chart. So at QB one, we have Skylar Thompson. He's 27. He's 27 years old, but he's only been in the league three years. He was drafted in the seventh round of the 2022 NFL draft, and right now he's questionable. Well, QB2, they got from the waivers, Tyler Huntley. He was cut by the Browns because the Browns and him could not come on a, a an agreement for him to be able to be traded. He said, I don't want to be traded from Cleveland. Well, guess what, Tyler? You get cut instead. You don't want to be traded? You get cut. So Tyler oh. Huntley got cut from the Browns. The Dolphins picked him up, and now he's QB2 on the roster. And QB3 right now is Tim Boyle. Do I have to give an explanation for Tim Boyle? Do I really do I really have to give an explanation there, for Tim Boyle? There's, there's, there's only Tim Boyle. There's only Tim one Boyle? thing I have to say about Tim Boyle, and that's the fact that he played for the Detroit Lions and New York Jets. Next. He played yeah, for the Packers, bro. Next. <laughs> well, those are your three QBs. Obviously, two is there, but he's on IR, so he's not on the depth chart. So the Dolphins are keeping their decision under wraps until we eventually see who's going to be on the field Monday night starting the game. Okay. Well, Jack, 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 I, I, we've been over this. It's almost like I don't do my research before I come on here. Jack, we talked about this. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Hold up. Jack, Jack, I do my research thoroughly before I get on here. Go look up Dolphin step chart. ESP and Jack, and go tell me who their QB2 is. Thank you. So that is your depth chart for the Miami Dolphins going into Monday night. They're keeping it under wraps. I give you all that to ask you, who do y'all think starts Monday night against the Titans? Do you think it's Skylar Thompson, Tyler Huntley, or Tim Boyle, the Packers legend? Packers legend. Oh, crap. Sorry. <laughs> y'all are not... I have muscle memory. <laughs> it's got to be Tyler Huntley. He's the only one that has any mobility in his, even in his pinky. Like, Skylar Thompson is a sad excuse for a quarterback. Tim Boyle is at least, like, the definition of a mid-backup quarterback. Tyler Huntley gives them the best chance to win. I, I think that's flat out. Um He's the only one that's ever 
actually like played some real I mean Skylar Thompson has, but Skylar Thompson has been horrible. When you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and you can't even put up numbers, that's that's depressing. So Tim Boyle, no shot. Not happening. That that if they start Tim Boyle, Mike McDaniel needs to be locked out of the building. That's all I gotta say. That's just ridiculous. No. No. Huh. I'm gonna try and not be a contrarian. I was gonna say, I mean, both Thompson and Huntley have playoff experience. They played in bigger games. The only thing I will say is if Skylar Thompson is healthy, they will probably go with him. But for me personally, if I'm if I'm literally hired as the Dolphins head coach, I'm putting in Snoop Huntley at starting quarterback. You gotta you gotta put in the great pro bowler backup quarterback to Snoop Huntley. Um, so yeah, I just think, well, yes, T- Skylar Thompson's been with the Dolphins his entire career, knows the playbook, yada, yada, yada. There's no shot in any universe that Tyler Huntley is a worse quarterback than Skylar Thompson. And I completely agree. Tim Boyle should never see a football field again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, sorry brother. I'm sorry, brother. Get ready to learn QB coach, buddy. Um, whoa. There- Get ready to learn offensive quality control coach, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would go with Tyler Huntley, too, even if Skylar Thompson's healthy because he's outside of nearly beating the Bills. He's been ass his entire career. Whoa. I do want to address this no. comment, though. Do you know Skylar Thompson's stats that game? He went 18 head. for 45. He threw they let they let Skylar Thompson throw the ball 45 times that game and only scored a touchdown and threw two picks. Skylar Thompson was not the reason the Dolphins almost won that game to the Bills. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was more about the Bills nearly imploding. It, than... it was yeah, it was yeah, yeah. They almost won. Thank you, thank you. Not not Skylar Thompson almost won. Thank you, Jack. I always gotta I gotta I always gotta bust your balls from now and now. Yeah. What okay. are you doing to balls? Nothing. I just got to bust his chops. Okay. What do you say, right. big guy? Next thing on the menu is not Jack. Me. So, <clears throat> what? The Titans, the Tennessee Titans, now when they, have, when they went against the Bears not too long ago, I commented in our group chat and said, this is the battle for the number one overall draft pick in the 2025 NFL draft. And and that still seems to be the case to this week, that both of those teams are competing for the number one overall draft pick in the 2025 NFL draft. Well, now the Titans are starting off to own three, and they've used a second-round draft pick in 2023 to draft the Kentucky alumni Will Levis. Now, they got rid of Ryan Tannehill, did not want to re-sign him, and now Will Levis is their starting QB, leading the Titans to the promised land. Well, this year, Will Levis is 68% completion. He has 579 passing yards, four tutties, and five interceptions to add to it. It doesn't look great for the starting quarterback. My question for you guys is, do the Titans stick with Will Levis until maybe his rookie contract ends, keeps him the starter, or – do they try to draft a quarterback in the in the in the draft coming up because they probably will be one of the top three picks in this draft and see what happens from there? I'll let you go first on that one, Jack. Uh, you have no loyalty to Will Levis, especially this is a new coaching staff. This is a new regime that did not draft Will Levis at all, and the simple fact that. Unlike if you had drafted him in the first round, he is a second round pick, which means he gets no fifth year option, which means you have basically the rest of this year and two more years to decide, essentially one more year, a year and a half to decide if you want to pay Will Levis. And based on what he's done in his career outside of his random debut against the Falcons last year, he has been one of the worst starting quarterbacks in all of the league. There's a reason I had him in the low 20s or the high 20s when I did my quarterbacks ring or at the start of the year. He hasn't shown any, he didn't show anything before the season to earn anything higher. 
and he certainly hasn't done anything now. He is a meme factory with three of the most hilarious turnover pictures in NFL history. <laughs> so, no, I honestly think if they are in a top five spot or top three spot in this year's NFL draft, you draft a new quarterback, you move on, you get what you can. Uh, hopefully they will do a better job than the Bears have done in supporting Caleb Williams. But do what you did, do what the Bears did and sh- what they did with Justin Fields, ship him off to a team where he can compete to be a starter and just hit the reset button. Allow your new head coach to have his quarterback for the duration of the contract and get a guy you can have on a fifth-year options so you have a little bit more time with. Okay, Jackson, who do they who do they go after in the draft? I have not even sniffed anything yeah. right now. Um, the main guy I've obviously been here, everyone's hearing about is Shadur Sanders, but I feel like from a maturity standpoint at this point, I would – put a 10 foot pole between me and Shadur Sanders. Um, so I honestly, I'm not sure maybe, maybe a Carson Beck, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they wait a year and then maybe next year they go after a quarterback in the draft or who knows, maybe they'll pull an Atlanta Falcons and sign a big free agent quarterback. If one comes available, maybe, Maybe Aaron Rodgers will switch up his career from the Brett Favre cosplay and play for the Titans and his career instead of the Vikings. Ugh. MJ. I think it's, and Connor will probably hate this. Who knows? I think it's more, I think Will Levis has a lot of talent. I think there's no other existing talent in Tennessee. So I think it's, It's not fair to Will Levis. Not that the NFL is fair; it has to be fair, but it's almost impossible to evaluate him on the on the current with on the current roster. Um, I watched the Packers play them and beat them with Malik Willis, and that is a testament to what somebody can do with good coaching and a good roster once they leave Tennessee. So, I'm not I'm not concerned about Will Levis. I'm concerned about the fact that they don't have a talented roster. So I don't think you need to go spend all of this investment on a quarterback when you're not just a quarterback away. It's very clear to me that you're not just a quarterback away. So go get the rest of your roster taken care of. Um, and I understand there's also the argument, you know, the quarterback can make, make the roster better. You know, that's what people see Jordan Love doing with not having a wide receiver one. But I think that also comes down to, honestly, a lot of it is the play calling in Green Bay, which is very evident by the fact that Malik Willis was able to have one of the highest passer rating games in the NFL this year. Nobody would have thought that. Tennessee definitely wouldn't have thought that. So clearly to me, there's a lot of issues in Tennessee going on that don't have to do with Will Levis. What, Jackson? No, I like that answer because if you would have said, you know, you don't like Will Levis, I would ask you this follow-up question like I did Jackson. But – uh you make it. You you raise a good point. I mean, Malik Willis goes to the Green Bay, and we see what he did against his old team. And I loved Malik Willis when they kind of interviewed him and stuff. He was like, they were like, "Oh, what? How does this feel like whenever you get to go against your old team? You know, you got to feel a certain sense of pride if you beat him." And he's like, "You know what? A game. It's it's just a game. The game's a game. You know, a win's a win. It doesn't matter if it's against my old team or or." know a team i really like to beat it's just it's just a game and that's all football is just a game huh Hmm? Hmm? all you football haters i know you i know you you're sitting here you're sitting here looking at us like why are they talking about a sport that doesn't matter you know what you know it does matter football matters in this country okay we wouldn't have the biggest event in our history of our country the super bowl Every year, it is the most watched event in America. Okay? Hey, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's the most watched event in America. So for you to say it's just a game, it's far more than a game. There's a lot of mind. There's a lot of physical stuff that goes into football. And for you to just say it's a game, like you want to compare it to chess, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be a hater. Who hater. compared football to chess? The football haters. I had a lady, we had, I was in intro to 
communication theory. And we have to have these, we have 12 kind of sentences and we were learning about this, uh, these latitude of, of attitudes or whatever. And it was like a latitude of acceptance, a latitude of rejection and like a latitude of non-commitment. And so you had to say, if you accepted it, then you would say, okay, well, I agree with this. If you rejected it, oh, I disagree with it. If you were in the middle, you could just non-commit to it. Well, this, it was all about sports. Like it was about like NIL and all this stuff. It was really cool. And this girl gets in our group and she is like, I don't really think sports matters. I don't think sports brings in money. Girl, <laughs> we are in the South. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. We are in the South. If there's anything that brings in money, it's football. Go look at Texas. Go look at Texas. What MJ talked about earlier. Go look at Texas. They bring in a lot of money for their football. That's why SMU was able to pay in to be in the ACC. They weren't. They they were not brought in the ACC. They paid their way through the ACC because you know why? They had the money too. Because football is big in the South. And then she had the audacity, the audacity to come up to us after the fact and said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just arguing. I'm sorry. I just argued a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, girl, shut up and go home. Go. <laughs> Good Lord. Like, I understand, like, if you thinking it doesn't matter in, like, your own personal life, you don't care. That's fine because that's your own prerogative. But to say that sports don't doesn't bring in money is just so intellectually dishonest and morally bankrupt that it's – like, how do you even say that when I bet you, if you would have asked her, like, how she feels about how much athletes are paid, both in college and in the professionals, she said, oh, they're paid too much money. I'm like, then how do they have that much money to pay, pay the players if they don't make money? Who's good the math ain't mathin'. The math ain't mathin' if she said that. I don't know if she did. I don't know if she knows, but... That's just my thing. No, oh, doesn't add up. People just need to go touch grass. <laughs> or touch some turf. Or touch turf.